I extend on behalf of my family sincerest love, gratitude. The love and generosity, the kindness and the outgoing of tributes across the nation has been so appreciated. My family and I send our love to each one of you for supporting, for raising voices, and for showing so much kindness and respect. I'm sincerely overwhelmed and eternally grateful. I don't want any more violence. I'm the only person who can get justice for my son. Stand alongside me and I appreciate everyone. But I need to call out for calm. I am angry. Cassie's friends and family are angry. But I don't want any form of violence at any of these rallies in the name of my child. Violence breeds violence. I want calm and peace. I don't want to feel prejudices, biases. I don't want to feel the stereotypes of First Nations people as violent. We know from the early days Cassius would be a shining star. This was easily seen by his family by the way he smiled. He laughed the way he cared about others. Cassius was a people lover who treated everyone equally and respectfully. He was jovial, kind, and his heart larger than life. Cassius was the first and only child of my late husband, Sam Turby. Cassius on my 40, 40th birthday present, ah, Cassius was my 40th birthday present, which made him extra special. My husband was 47 years old when he was born. We were still in mourning and stricken when Cassius passed away. Cassius' dad had only passed away on the 22nd of August after a two year battle of cancer and was buried on the 12th of September. I didn't think I would be burying my son within months of losing caskets and dad. Cassius was liked and loved by so many people on first contact, ranking with kids of earlier age groups to teachers everywhere. There was no reason for anyone not to like him. He was community orientated, involved in a local football group and two basketball teams. He had so much respect for elders. He was the heart and soul of the community. Cassius wanted the community to see that young people were bad people and they could do good things. At 13, he set up a local lawn mowing gig. I remember this one day when he mowed two lawns and he said to me, I wonder if anyone else wants their lawns done. I said, I said to him, why don't you walk around and ask? He did. He left with our lawn mower. It was getting dark and I was starting to get worried. He didn't have his phone on him. When he returned, I said, where have you been all day? Cassius said, we mowed 15 lawns and five of them want us to come back. Later, he asked me the question, because you made some money, Mum, do I have to pay tax? <laughs> I thought that was so funny. He was thinking like a business person at such a tender age. He wanted to work and was asking since he was 12. Can I get a job? He was so destined for work and was about to start at Kmart. He had only just completed the training in induction and was about to start work with a group of his mates at Kmart who, who he inspired.
inspired to work with him. He was so keen to learn more about working in the mines for a two-day program. He was one of 10 students selected of Year 9 students. Then took, took place on the 17th of October. Cassius was in hospital because of this brutal attack on the 13th of October, which eventually took his life on the 23rd of October. The answers I want is why. A complete statement was not taken by police from Cassius after the violent attack, and there was no contact with me, his mother. Why? It takes the loss of a loved one to get proper duty of care in an investigation. I feel that as, as his mum. I should have kept, I should have been kept in the loop about this statement. The statement was incomplete. It was vital. Cassius was talking at the hospital and should have taken his full statement, but never did. I want kids to embrace community without fearing community. I want to see memory and legacies of Cassius. I want everyone to encourage everyone to be savvy and start getting video evidence if they are about to be attacked or something else. In and out of schools, youth violence has escalated. We must reduce this and evidence gathering by other children. We're too frightened to intervene, not delay call calling authorities. Children should be educated to contact teachers and authorities immediately. The government needs to invest in eliminating youth violence. It's mandatory that, they are, that there are significant investments in youth centres, in programs where kids matter, and work on building with lost youth on self-esteem gaps. There must be significant awareness about bullying, and that these programs need to be funded. Mentoring. You just can't put a poster up about bullying. You need mentors. I want a Kids Matter program that instills empowerment in my Midland community. We want these Kids to Matter programs to begin in Midland, where a significant proportion of the population are Indigenous which hopefully spreads across the country at a pace of a lost and troubled young souls. They need mentors to do the journey with them. I would like to see a program like this established and act accessed by all wonderful young people in my area so that they can have a vision like Cassius, where he started. Kids matter, kids can do it. Now, applaud this woman.